What's up guys, Night Angel here, and uh, today we're going to look at the minions of Sea Salt. So just a heads up, here I don't can't really find all the of the minions in this game yet. I'm missing 4 of the cards, 4 of uh, 19, so I have 15 out of 19. Yeah, uh, I tried a couple of things and uh, I found one. Only one card, and then yeah, and then I wasn't able to find any more. There may be certain like criteria that you had to fulfill in order to get the rest of the four cards, that of which I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna go over the 15 that I have right now, and uh, if you guys have any minions that I don't have, uh, can you please leave in the comments? and let me know um, uh, where to get these uh, yeah I guess <laughs> let's get just start the video here so first we have the swarm the most common of this unspeakable arthropod horse lurking in the sea they're that which hides in seaweed they're that which snaps at you as your toes try to find the bottom they're, they are the antediluvian vermin that scurried through all surface worlds which now lay buried beneath the sea so their most common uh, card, uh, these are your starter cards, so yeah, nothing much to say there. Then there's the worm. Like the swarm, worms are part of the arthropod phylum and started appearing on rotting civilizations that came before, feeding on old knowledge and putrid corpses. They now exist to thwart progress and consume discarded hollow bodies of the sacrificed. So these guys, the worm is not very useful in my opinion. You don't really want to use the limited amount of summoning circles that you have or the limited number of gold that you have to summon the worm. It's not very fast and it's not very uh, like strong damage wise. And uh, I'll have a map showing where this card can be gotten. I'll have a map showing you like where it is, like if it's after a boss or if it's in some area. Then there's the cultist. When the first of the humans started worshipping Dagon and the tremendous power beheld deep into the sea, they followed Triton. He led them thousand fathoms deep, promising everlasting life. Those that emerged became wilders of Maja, mindlessly lending their abilities for the parades of Dagon. So these units are your main ranged uh, damaging units. They have like really high attack, but they're really squishy. Be careful not to get them damaged or be careful of positioning and uh, have your melee minions in front of these guys. So that's how how you would uh, play the cultist. Yeah, I, I I can't remember on the top of my, of my head, but I'll have a map showing where you get this card. If you have gold or if there is a summoning circle, the cultist is my choice uh, because they can shoot from far away and they don't take damage, right? Oh, but one thing there is that they don't have that much uh, horror, so they're not very scary to the humans. So the humans, they wouldn't really run, run away and they would shoot at you instead of running away. So that's something to consider also. There's uh, Then there's a creature from the lagoons and swamps swallowing the forgotten forests of creature formed from constricting vines. Village people living in Rotwood Forest fear it and tell horror stories to their children. Never wonder, never to wander alone to where the water is deep green and drowns hanging trees. One such creature looking at a farm from the lagoon fell in love with a woman, but upon their meeting, she was scared into never returning home. So, uh, we have the creature. Well, I remember this getting this card clearly. It was. Uh, like it says in the lore here, uh, in the Rotwood Road, it wasn't easy to get. It was like you can see the car there, but you can't get to it. Uh, I had to like walk through this invisible path to get to the car. 
and I uh, have a, a link to the uh, video showing that top right of the cor of this video, uh, and uh, and it, that video will show you where to get the creature card. Uh, personally, I haven't played around with the creature, but I have seen that uh, it's a uh, it's a ranged attack that uh, traps the humans in like in a cage, and then it damages them. Yeah, despite it being like super large, it is a ranged unit. I'll also have the stats listed beside this, uh, since this Book of Dagon uh, doesn't show the card stat. I'll have the stats of each card uh, right beside it, showing their attack, the horror, defense, speed, etc. Alright, next there's the fly. When the fishermen of Carlhaven were gifted copious amounts of fish by Dagon as a benevolent reward for their uncompromising sacrifices, they had so much that tons of fish were left to rot by the shore, bringing hordes of flies that grew to frightening sizes. So the fly. Well, personally, I, I don't know about how useful this is. It's also melee. The good thing about this is that it's really fast, so it can chase people around, but it doesn't do a lot of damage uh, and it's really squishy so personally i wouldn't pick it not very good the crab imagine giant spiders with armor huge sharp claws that can crack a skull like a walnut and antenna feelers which can sense fear pheromones from thousands of miles underwater they're the tiny tanks of the sea shotgun blasts bounce off their shells and fire only makes the air around them smell a little better. So these crabs, they are resistant to fire, they're really tanky, but they're not, they do not do very much damage. Uh, now before you get this, the next one, the, before you get the fishman, the crab is your main source of tank, your main like melee frontline units protects your cultists in the back. The crab is a tank that soaks up all the damage in the front and then you would want a mix of these with some cultists, some some other minions, maybe you have some swarm in the mix because the swarm do more damage than the crab and then uh, the crab would soak up some damage while the swarm, your swarm would, uh, would do the damage. And uh, and then you also you have your cultists in the back shooting, uh, firing their rays. Next, there's the fishman. Not much no is known about the fishman, but it is said that they're direct descendants of Dagon, and the line of primordial eldritch beings that thrived before the first deluge. They live in vast sunken cities, but as time passed, ocean currents twisting their bodies and the weird darkness dissolving their soul, they devolved into creatures of gloomy gait and the hunger for fresh flesh. So the fishman is an all-around unit. They, are, they have decent health, decent uh, speed, they move around decently fast, their damage is decent, everything is decent on these guys. So. The fishman would replace the crab in tanking because despite being not as tanky as the crab, the fishman they do a lot more damage and uh, they move a bit a little bit faster than the crab. And uh, yeah, that, like I mean, doing more damage is always better. Mixing these with uh, the swarm, uh, maybe even the fly, and then your cultists in the back would be good. Even though oh, there is no also no fire resist, as long as you're careful, careful with your moving around positioning, and you can still use the fishman to do damage. They're the efficient for the amount of minions that you get for each summon. And then there's the lich, reuse and renewal, the recycling of life. Males were never trained as necromancers, they did not harbor life in the way needed for the magic to work, and the few females that had the honor to be trained in necromancy were seen as oracles and priestesses bursting spirits back into the living world through the seed of death. Necromancy became deeply connected with the Christian faith when Joseph and Mary tried to use necromancy to bring their dead son back to life. 
So the lich, you should only have one lich in your party at all times. If unfortunately the lich dies somehow, would want to summon another lich back to replace because you want the humans that you kill to come back and then fight for you so that you get, you get more army that way. However, the souls that come back, they're te only temporary and they would die after a short period of time. But during that period of time, you can still use them as uh, meat shields so that your actual army do not take damage from whatever enemy is around. So the Lich, a really good unit, a really like decent support unit that I, what I think is a must have in all compositions. And then the Drodger, the largest of the arthropod family. These grotesque creatures were applied in uh, were applied nickname the Drogers with a purpose akin to a transportable egg. Being hermaphroditic, the Drogger doesn't require a partner to reproduce. Instead, upon death, it releases countless sperms that then seek to burrow inside another creature, which then changes the genetic code of said creature and deforms it into a new Drogger. So, despite what it says in the lore there, uh, the, after the Drogger dies, uh, you would get a bunch of creatures that are similar to the Swarm. They mo move pretty fast. They're pretty much sim very similar to the Swarm. I think maybe a better version of the Swarm. I only have stats for the Drogger. I don't really have for the stats uh, of the offspring that the Drogger produces. So that's kind of shame. Pretty good unit overall, even though you only get one Drogger per summon, he does give you a lot more units upon death. It's not bad pickup, to, uh, instead of if you want to pick up Swarm, you would rather pick this guy up, I think. And uh, next, there is the Toad. As a defense mechanism to protect their tadpole spawn, these giant toads figured out a way to create a chemical combustion that will kill themselves, but also any predator that may be in the area. Villagers in swampy areas would sometimes use them as fireworks, but many lost a finger or two. So these are self-sacrificing uh, minions that if you attack, it's a one-time deal. Uh, I would not recommend you picking this up. It's not a good unit to pick up. You would not want to use your precious summoning circles and gold to summon the toad. It can only attack once and if you miss, you lose your chance and they just die. Why would you want something that, that just dies? Even though they, they do a lot of damage, but I mean, if you're alive, you can do more damage. Over a lot, even though it's over a longer period of time, but you still do a lot more damage if you're alive, right? And uh, next, there's the flesh. This unknown entity seems to be a runaway mollusk. It most likely crawled out of its shell when it was called upon by Dagon to fight. It normally hunts by waiting for its prey to get in close, then it will pounce using momentum to its advantage. This flesh is not recommended to barbecue. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Uh, the flesh it has really good horror value. Personally, I haven't tried this card. But just from the look of things, it looks to be really good. I From the description here, it says that it uh, pounces. So maybe when you attack, uh, you, close the, you can close the, the distance really fast. So so you so you don't get kited by like ranged enemies. I don't know. I haven't played around with this, so I wouldn't have much opinion uh, uh, on it. It's worth a try. Then there's the hermit. Some of those that became cultists ventured further into the depth than others. They became one with the ocean floors, slowly but surely turning into hermits. Like their crab counterparts, they became highly resilient and practiced ways to protect themselves from the outside world. Isolated within their shells, they developed volumes of Maja, collected in the Grand Cathedral of Nova Ugarit. 
So there, there are you some of the Maja from the Grand, Grand Cathedral? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Anyways, so these guys, they can be used as tanks because they produce like a barrier that is an area and enemies that shoot, they, they, they can break through the barrier. Meanwhile, you can shoot from within your barrier, right? So, uh, it's a decent pick pickup, but the Hermit cannot attack. They do not have an attacking ability, so it's only uh, useful for their shield. Personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick it up, but it is, uh, it's, it, it is like good for what it does. It's a good card for, like, as a front line, as a, um, like m middle, like protection sort of minion. If you want to try this, I think it's decent for what it does. Then there's a drone. Before you may bear, before you may burn her, how does one make sure someone is a witch? You must make sure she is made of wood. Wood floats, and ducks float. So if she sings, she must be human, and if she floats, she must be a witch to burn. So this is the card that you get for uh, beating the witch. Beating the witch, which is uh, Xin Yin here. This witch. So as with the lore here, the boss witch that you beat was Hunk, but but the card here simply says that the people of Nova Ugarit have drowned a lot of women uh, who were believed to be witches, and then they were drowned just because of uh, simple beliefs, right? Anyways, I ha personally I haven't played around with this card. I think it may be it may be decent pickup. I will play around with it a bit more to get an understanding of how this minion works and see what benefits and disadvantages of this card. But I think it's a decent pickup if you want some high damage dealing min melee minions. I don't I don't remember what if she's uh, range or melee. Oh, uh, I remember now. She has she can her skill is she creates a pool of water around her, and then the water would distinguish all fire, and uh, the water would also slow down enemies and deal damage to them. So that is really useful. It's a utility. Uh, part uh, short ranged, but it's not melee. I think it's really good pickup. All right, the black cat. An old man and his wife would walk down to where the cats gather by the coast with leftover fried fish. Feeding the cats for years, they developed a bond and could almost talk to them. After his wife passed, he adopted one that he named Fish Sticks and swore she would whisper to him. She lived with him until his death, and some of the townsfolk say she still lives out among the witches. So, this black cat is really useful as a semi-ranged melee unit. So the black cat pounces on all enemies. If you press the attack button, it, uh, the cat Pounce to uh, the closest, the closest enemy and deal damage to, to them. But one thing to note is that sometimes they get stuck somewhere in the map, and the only way for them to get unstuck if, is if there's another enemy and you attack and they will pounce again. Or if you leave the room and then go to onto the next room, then all your units that are alive get transported to the next room and then the cat gets unstuck. I've tried this, it's a good unit to pick up alongside uh, your fishman and cultist because while the enemy is taking damage from the cat, they cannot attack, uh, attack or shoot and then they, uh, they will get horror and run away and such. 
and then that gives your uh, time for your fishman to close the gap and uh, time for your cultists to shoot their bolts, their rays. So it's a decent pickup. I would recommend this card for those that like not being kited around. Then there's the maggots. As the city grew, so did this disease and rot. All the fish that was wasted in heaps on the shores in out of Carlhaven were filled with maggots. All the cows and pigs in the farms that were slaughtered in sacrifice would crawl with maggots. All the people that lived in the city fearing the day their name would stand them into the pit were all filled with maggots. This life is a feast for the dead. So the maggots, personally, I don't like the maggots. I don't like them in real life. <laughs> I don't any I don't think anyone likes them in real life. But they they're slow moving, they're like the worm, that they're really slow. But so their ability is that they uh, multiply as as they eat human corpse, so they so you get more units that way. But they're really slow, so they can't really avoid projectiles or flames. So area of effect just kills them. Why would you pick this card up? And uh, yeah, that's it for all of my minions. I mean, it is not all of the minions. It's most of them. At least I've covered most of it. Uh, there are still four left. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, that uh, I couldn't really find the, any information on. If I find uh, more information on the remaining four cards, I I will just amend it to the end of this video, and then you guys can just see everything in one video here. Yeah, so uh, that's it for all the all of the minions. Some of them are really good. Some of them are not so good but at the end it all comes down to whatever you want to do i think that any you can make use of any of these cards with efficiency as long as you're good at controlling the minions but if you just want good uh, combination of minions that is solid to play that is solid for of damage solid, like easy to play easy to manipulate around it would be the black cat probably the drowned the flesh if you want to pick up uh, one or two drawder it's good the lich for sure the fishman a couple of fish uh, a couple of summons of fishman each summon gets you five so maybe one summon or two summons of this if you want the crab, it's decent too. Uh, the creature for trapping enemies. Cultist is always good. Uh, in this game, there are also cultist sacrificing altars, which uh, you sacrifice four of your cultists, and uh, in return, you get a super minion. Uh, you can, uh, personally, I've encountered two different, uh, minions that can come out of the altar. One is a, uh, like a ray, like a light, an eye, it's similar to, uh, Velkos from League of Legends that can shoot like a ray at the enemies. And then the other one is a, uh, like a super cultist but it is a melee and that minion that super cultist I don't know I don't, I don't know their names but this super cultist would do a lot of damage and melee range and obviously in the beginning you would have your swarm but as time as you progress into the game uh, the cultist the creature, the fishman, the lich, the drawder, possibly, the flesh and the drowned, uh, and the black cat are your choices. Alright guys, so I found three more minions 
uh, that were shown in the game trailer uh, published by YCJY uh, Games that created this game. So they made a trailer and then they, sh they had uh, this uh, deck that basically had every single minion and I couldn't really find the last one. But here it is, three more minions. There's the Locust, a uh, large number of temporary minions that will die after a short time. The melee, L, C, attack C, speed A, or D, and you get 30 of them. So uh, the fact that they would die after a short time is not good in my opinion. Uh, unless you were like almost close to the end uh, where you need a bunch of melee minions to soak up damage, I wouldn't really pick this up. And then there is the Shaman, a branch of cultists that can heal their allies. The fish scale robe gives them a defense bonus. Uh, okay, so they're healers. Hmm, I wonder where, where do you get this card from? Okay, they're well, they're healers. Their speed is only D, though. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, you don't really want a lot of them since they're just healers. I guess it's it's okay. One of, uh, I mean, the only healer in the game. And then there's the spitters, fast attacking range minion that slows and deal low damage. Their alien appearance strikes fear into untrained enemies. I have seen these guys around, like in the game, but I don't know where to get the card from. Well, they're ranged uh, health C, attack C, speed D, horror B, they're, they're really good at scaring people. And uh, you get 5 of them. Maybe instead of the cultists, you will want to use the spitters. But of course, first you need to find these, find the card first. Yeah, those are the three more minis, and uh, as I said before, uh, I've see, uh, got these uh, three cards from the video published by YCJY Games on their YouTube channel. So and I'll have a link to their to that if you guys want to check it out. All right. So after some time, I have found that on the discussion forums uh, in Steam for the Seesaw game, uh, there has been someone who has posted a, a forum that has all the guides to where to get all of the cards in this game. Uh, so I have followed that and uh, now I have all of the cards here. If you guys have the game yourselves uh, and you want to check out the guide, it is in the uh, Steam forum discussions uh, post. It's under the guide section. So that's where you will get uh, all of the information that you can to get all of the cards that, uh, that are available in this game. So I'm gonna uh, go over uh, everything that I did not uh, get before. Uh, so first off, it's the spitters. Seen by some as messengers that come from another planet, great monoliths were erected by primitive cultures in their name. However, as knowledge of the old gods became more prevalent, it was apparent that they were created as specialized hunters capable of capturing and poisoning their prey from a distance by breeders of the old civilization. So the spitters, as I mentioned before, uh, they're useful maybe as a replacement to the cultists. I do have the stats available on the screen here and uh, there's also a short clip of where you can get this card, uh, a video clip uh, if you don't want to check out the guide and just want something visual, it's on the screen right now. Okay, next, the madman. Who has he seen? What does he know? No one really understands him and no one really cares to. Let him be, but don't let him come too close to me. So this is another uh, card that can be obtained pretty early on in the game. Uh, it is quite hidden though. Yeah, as you see in this uh, video I'm putting on screen right now, it's you have to kill this drunkard, kill him and you get a card. Uh, so this guy, it's the one card that I have not covered. He is an uncontrollable unit. So if you get this guy, he does not do any damage, but he just spreads terror. 
the enemies they don't really attack him so you, if you get uh maybe one summon or two summons of this card he can just spread a lot of terror and then your units uh, won't be hit by the enemies uh, i'm not sure if he can scare the hunters that i have to see but he is quite useful as a supporting card so that your actual units don't get hit by the enemies uh, especially there's the, the rifle and the flame bomb guy so those guys can be scared okay, then there is the locust within the finely sheared shrubs of the city gardens just below the surface where roots are entwined like corpses on a death cart millions of locust eggs lay in wait to be birthed by dark magic every civilization feared them as they could ruin entire landscapes and decimate crops in just a few moments then as quickly as they came they all fought dead to impregnate the ready earth for another attack so uh the locust uh as i said before this you don't really want to pick this guy up uh maybe you want them just for meat shield and just for a, a like a final attack sort of thing but uh, since then they drop dead uh, after a short period of time like it's not very good uh, but you do get 30 of them you, if you want a really huge army really quickly for the boss or for some other uh, enemies that you cannot overcome really easily you can pick this guy up and then uh, they can use as meat shields and also temporary attacking units and uh, finally uh, we have the shaman this branch of cultists dedicated their life to nurturing antediluvian creatures demons and their ilk they will gather in swamp lands outside of carhaven and drape their and drape their bodies with the skin of fish that could not be saved in a ritualistic practice of remembrance their magic seems to be rooted in voodoo utilizing mushrooms, herbs, and other vegetation to imbue their spells with healing properties. So, the shaman, they are the only uh, card in this game that can actually heal your units. So, they are a really good supporting unit. Like I said before, you want uh, one set of these or maybe two sets of these in your party just to heal your units if they ever get injured. Yeah, that's it. And these guys are can be found also uh, quite hidden and uh, I still have a uh, video showing you guys where to get it. So that's all of the cards here. I have said in the beginning of this video that I am missing the, these four cards uh, that I'm showing you guys in the end here but now uh, I do have all of these cards. I have shown you guys all of their lore and uh, all, of it, all of their stats and what I think about these guys. So if you like this video, uh, please leave a like or a subscribe. I will appreciate it very much. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Possibly I'm gonna do a Apostles video, maybe. But uh, I'll wait and see. Yeah, all right. Thank you guys so much for watching again and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.